conference and uh, we have got so many exciting workshops and webinars for you today and we're kicking off by going through looking at using Twinkle Rhino readers um, and I have got an, a, a great guest to introduce you to so I'd really like to introduce you to Jo um, and Jo is um, here to go through with us all about Rhino readers um, and how we can use them um, as home editors. So welcome, it's so great to have you here. Thanks so much, Christy. Yes, hi everyone. So I'm the product owner of the Rhino Readers Reading Scheme and I'm so pleased to be here today at the Home Ed Conference. I'm, I'm hoping to talk with you about how the books might be helpful to you as home editors or if you're not in a school setting. And it would be really great as it's alive to answer any of your questions either at the end or after or as we go through so if you've got any questions please do drop them into the chat Chrissy will pass them on to me and I'll answer as many questions as I can so yep let's go Chrissy awesome so if you jump onto the next slide the three things that I'm going to cover today which I'm often asked about people in the Rhino Readers books is what is the Rhino Readers as it's quite a new product I'll talk a little bit about what Rhino Readers is what its scope is and how you can access the books with your Twinkle subscription I'm also going to talk about some of the different ways you can use the books with your children. And obviously with home education, there's a lot more options and flexibility in terms of how children learn to read. So it's possible to use the Rhino Readers books in lots of different ways, which aren't always possible in a school setting. And finally, I'll hopefully go through some hints and tips on how you can get the most out of reading sessions with children when you're using the Rhino Readers. We, I work on a team of more than 20 people and most of us have been teachers. So together we've chalked up well over 100 years of working with children who are begin, at the beginning stages of learning to read. So it's going to be a pool of our thoughts and hopefully a chance for you to share some of your ideas and things that have worked for you on helping your children to love reading. All right, we, all right to jump on, Chrissy. So the Rhino Readers might be a new scheme to some of you. Um, Twinkle have been making the originals range of picture and chapter books for a little while now. But the difference with Rhino Readers is that it's a staged reading scheme. So the books start easy and they gradually increase in challenge and they take children from their first letter sounds all the way up to reading fluency. And we began making the reading scheme books for children when we were developing the Twinkle Phonics Scheme because we realized that we were going to need books which matched the phonics that children were learning in the lessons so that they had a ready chance to practice what they knew straight away. And since then, we've grown massively and we're really proud of where we've come. We've now got 96 reading scheme books in print and we keep making more and they're available as e-books as soon as we um, finish them and release them. And they take children, as I said, from the first letter sounds up to the point where they can access books that are written, I'd say, for the eight to nine year old bracket. So quite a scope in what the reading scheme does. Now, we're not standing still. We've got plans to extend the range of Rhino readers, and we're looking forward to publishing another 32 books in September this year. And as well as all of that, we're currently creating some brand new ranges of books. We're making a range for children who are aged eight plus, but who are reading less confidently. And we're also making another range of books for children to be read to by adults. So ranges for children who haven't begun learning their letter sounds yet, but need to be in a good place to hear the sounds that make up words before they start actually reading and recognising letters for themselves. One final thing I'd say we're proud of is the wide range of genres and styles we have within the reading scheme and also the diversity and representation we have in our books when, if I'm honest, I think a few reading schemes that are out there can feel a little bit dated in this area. So basically, they're a set of fully decodable books. We feel that they're really colourful, eye-catching and modern and they're also very, very diverse and representative. So they're a really big thing and we're a really big um, part of Twinkle at the moment and we're really pleased to be able to share them with you today. 
So how can you read the books? Well, the first way to read the books is through the Twinkle site, so on a browser. Um, if you've ever used Twinkle Go or any of the interactive activities on there, well, the books launch in pretty much just the same way. We've put audio on lots of the books, so it's possible to listen to them as well as read. And it's easy to navigate around the levels. I'm hoping to be able to show you this in a minute. But there's a left-hand menu where it's easy to get between the different levels and see the full range. Now, to read the ebooks in this way, you'll need to subscribe to Twinkle at the ultimate level. The second way you can get to the books is to buy paperback copies, because lots of people really do just prefer a printed book to hold and share. So our Rhino Readers books, and I've actually got a couple with me down here. These ones are nice and sturdy, as you can see, nice shiny covers, and the text and the font come out at a really nice size for early readers. So this one is a the big mud mess, and you can see how the font is nice and big and easy to see. Now, in terms of buying those, I'm going to go through the prices and options for those in a minute if it's something you're interested in. But the final way that you can read our books is through the Rhino Readers app. And this also comes as part of your ultimate account. So if you're an ultimate subscriber, you can use your Twinkle login and password to get straight in once you've downloaded the app from the App Store or Google Play. If you're not an ultimate subscriber, you can still get the app because you can subscribe for £1.99 a month. And that's just through your app provider. So you would set that up through Apple ID or Google Play, and then you would log in with your credentials through those sites. And again, I'm going to go through the three options and how to make them all work in a little bit more detail now. So if you jump on, Chrissy, the best way to get to the library of ebooks on Twinkle is to stay away from the Twinkle search because then um, they can bring an awful lot of stuff back when you type reading books into there. Instead, what I'd suggest is that you navigate to them through the Rhino Readers landing page. Now, I'm hoping to show you a little bit about this today. It's the landing page is www.twinkle dot co slash reading scheme and Chrissy's going to share that in the chat so if I just share my screen with you now what you can see is here at the top you've got that banner with the rhino readers you've got your option to order the printed copies but if you scroll down you can get to a button called access the ebook library and that will take you down to the page where you can see all the different level book collections. And we've got books now from level one to level six. Our level one books are really new. They've literally just gone on site this week. And we're super excited about those. Those are, those are the ones for children before they start any letter sounds at all. So to look at the books, you would click on view level two books and then another tab will open and you'll be able to see our full range of level two books. And if you look at the sidebar over here, you can see that it's possible to jump around between the different levels here. So if level two books look a little bit too easy, you can jump on to level three and so on all the way up to level six. And as well as that, in this sidebar, there are a few different links as well, which might be useful to you. We've got a range of sound books and they are just going through those individual phonic sounds so that you can hear them really clearly. We've got some display materials as well, and we've got some information about Twinkle Phonics there. So I would really recommend having a t taking a little bit of time to explore the Rhino Readers landing page and getting through and having a look at the different ranges of books that we have, because it definitely is worth a poke around and it's by far the easiest way to navigate around the books. Now, I'm going to stop, stop sharing my screen and Chrissy's going to restart sharing her screen. Oh. And if we jump on to the next slide, thank you, Chrissy. The next way, so I've mentioned about buying the printed books, um, and a lot of people do prefer that, and they can now be purchased individually through the Twinkle store. It was the case that initially when we released the Rhino Readers, you had to buy quite big sets. Um, obviously, that's not ideal for home ed. I'm really pleased to say that it's now possible to buy the individual books themselves at $4.99 each. And if you're interested in doing that, you can have a little browse around. There's a link here on the screen at shop twinkle.co.uk and then from there you can navigate to the collections and the rhino readers and you can see all the books that we have available on there um, and Chrissy will be dropping that link into the chat so that's really exciting and I'm hoping you'll be able to have a look around and see what sorts of books appeal to you 
And then finally, if you jump forward one more, please, Chrissy, the Rhino Readers app's a really convenient way to access the books. And I'm going to take a little bit of time to show this video because she demos the features much better than I would do if I was going to hold my phone up to the screen. So I let, um, I let uh, you play this one, Chrissy. Hi there, welcome to the Rhino Readers app. The Rhino Readers app gives you access to an on-the-go digital library of fully decodable books for each level of Twinkle Phonics. The app's a great way for children to practice the letters and sounds covered in their phonics lessons while enjoying a broad and diverse range of reading books written to appeal to readers today. You've got two ways of accessing this app. You can simply log in with your Twinkle Ultimate subscription, or you can choose to subscribe directly, paying monthly through your app store of choice. Once you've done that, it's time to set up a child's profile. You can add up to 30 profiles to one device, so it's perfect for using with multiple children. Type in your child's name, and then they can choose one of the many fun avatars to be their profile picture. That's it, you're all ready to go. Once they've clicked on their profile, children can select books matching the different levels of Twinkle Phonics. And the Rhino Readers collection is constantly growing. There's a wide range of books to choose from, including fiction, non-fiction, poetry, play scripts, and even quiz books. Additionally, the phonics sounds books can be used to go over the sounds that the children will be coming across in that level. By clicking on the listen button, children can get the chance to hear the correct sound and practice seeing them before tackling the sounds in the book. Wave. Box. At the start of each book, there's also a before reading page. This covers the exact sounds and words that your child might need support with ahead of reading the story. Once confident, your child can select a book that they are interested in and either listen along to the story or read it themselves. If children need a clue when sounding out a word, you can see and hear all the letter sounds used in the book by clicking the hint button at the top and scrolling through the list. Click to hear the sound and an example Buzz. word each time. It's easy for children to find where they left off in their book too. Using the drop down menu from their profile picture, they can see their favourites and the books they've read before. A great feature of the app is that adults are able to hide certain books. This allows you to make sure the books your child is selecting are appropriate for their ability. And they don't get disheartened if they choose books which are too challenging for them at this time. To support reading comprehension, there are questions that you can discuss with your child after they've read the book. And if they've really loved a story, they can save it as a favourite for another time. There's a selection of mini games for each book too, to help with comprehension and word reading, or just for fun. The books are fully decodable and span a range of topics, themes and genres to capture children's imagination and interests. So why not check out the Rhino Readers app and get started today? See you next time! So the Rhino Readers app is really useful, especially if you want to have the books um, offline as well, because it's possible to download them to your device and then they're good for reading in the car or when you're out and about as well. So those are the three ways that you can get to the Rhino Readers books. Now, how will you add the books into your le home learning day and use them in a home learning environment? Of course, one of the strengths of home ed is that you're not bound by any requirements of the curriculum and the restrictions on how schools are expected to teach reading. So there's well be, could well be a few approaches you're taking when it comes to teaching your children to read.
Now, one of your options, of course, is to use the books alongside the teaching PowerPoints of Twinkle Phonics, and that's a similar way to how school would do. You would cover some letter sounds using the PowerPoints, and then the books would be used to reinforce that learning and give the children a chance to practice what they've learned. And if you're going to go about it this way, you'd probably work through the sub levels of the books in order in a similar way to the school, uh, the, the way that school would. Now, another way you could use the books is more of an part of an investigative investigative, I can find, find, find a way to say it, investigative, investigative child-led learning. And that would be based around a topic. And the books, of course, go a little bit beyond the stories of Kit and Sam in the phonics scheme. They actually cover a really wide range of topics and subjects, and which means that your children could use them as topic support with your help to decode any words that they would find challenging. And we have, as part of the scheme, non-fiction books at a wide range of levels, so less confident readers can find out about the subjects that they're interested in too. And our non-fiction books are part of, you know, the jewel in our crown, really. We really, really like having the non-fiction books as part of our reading scheme. And then finally, of course, if you're working, if working your way through formal scheme, a formal scheme of phonics isn't for you, you could use the structure of the books and their progression in a more light touch way. So you'd look at each book individually, particularly those focus words at the beginning that they mentioned in the app video that children need to be able to read. And you would kind of cover the books in a way that best fits your child's learning style. All right, you tend to jump on. Um, so I don't know if anybody does currently use the books alongside the Twinkle Phonics scheme. And if you do, it would be great to hear what you thought about how they work together in the chat. As an ultimate subscriber, you've got you access to both Twinkle Phonics and the Rhino readers. And obviously the, sque the scheme is progressive and it works its way through level one to level six. Now the Rhino readers books that are on sale as physical copies at the moment currently come in at level two. And that's when the first letter sounds begin to be taught. We're just beginning to release our level one books and that's where the focus is really on oral blending, segmenting, listening skills, rather than actually directly teaching letter sounds. So you can work your way through the, each week of phonics teaching because from the phonics website, you can download a weekly pack. And there's a PowerPoint to work through each week, as well as all the printable supporting resources you need so that the children can practice their skills. If that appeals to you, it's definitely worth exploring what's available at www.twinkle.com forward slash phonics. And I'm just going to pop that link in our chat, Chrissy, so you can share it because that might be useful to some of you if you're looking for support on how to teach phonics there's lots and lots of information on that page that will be able to help are you able to jump forward one slide thank you one thing that's good to know about as well is all of the range of supporting resources that there are to support those weeks of phonics teaching there's printable resources like table mats and games and flashcards and activity workbooks and a large range of online games to support learning to read, as we know those appeal to many children who aren't as keen on written work. And again, you can explore the wide range of activities that we have at www.twinkle.com forward slash phonics. And again, if you're choosing to work through the scheme and use those Rhino Readers books in conjunction with the Twinkle Phonics teaching, it does help to know which letter sounds and tricky words children are going to come across in each of the levels of books. So we've actually banded our books and within each of the levels of Twinkle Phonics, we've got an A, B and C sub level. Now this page shows you exactly which letter sounds that you would be able to see in each sub level of the book. And what many people do is work through the first three weeks of Twinkle Phonics. And once the children know the first 12 letter sounds that are right on the top line, so we've got s, a, t, p, i, n, m, d, g, o, and the two ways of spelling k, then the children can start reading the level 2A Rhino Readers books. They can read any one of those books. They're not in a particular order. And then you can take it from there and work through. Now, this page and the page which follows actually come from our guide to the Rhino Readers scheme. And that shows you exactly which letter sounds and tricky words children can expect to see in each level of book. And just to make sure that there are no surprises, we do include all the letter sounds and tricky words for each book at the start of each book on what we call our before 
for reading page. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a little while, but basically it's the best way that we, ha we have for children to brush up on those words before they actually tackle them in context. And you can see that there's progression because at the start of level two, children are just reading three letter words. But by the time they get to the end of level four, they're reading four sentences. And by the time they get to the end of level six, they're reading at a level that we would expect in a, a sort of a seven, eight, nine year old to read at. So it really does take them through to reading with confidence and fluency. Now, if you do like planners and organisation, all of that information that I just mentioned is available on a poster in the Twinkle store so that you can all have it in one place. However, if you prefer a more topic based approach, we've got a wealth of different subjects and topics to offer at all the different levels. So you can see we've got babies and we've got cats and big cats. We've got helicopters and those are for our earliest readers. We've got different kinds of hobbies and interests. We've got dogs. We've got how to make wool. And some of these nonfiction books are really nice in that they blend the, font, the, the um, photos and illustration really nicely together so that you've got a really lovely appeal there. We've got mini beasts and we've got a popular hair book. Superheroes. All about different kinds of sports. Your body from top to toe, all about elephants. And we've got lots of books under for our more confident readers. Under the Sea Quiz shows you about all of the different creatures under the sea. Fire Fire is a time travel. Um, it's all about two children going back to the Great Fire of London. So there's lots of history woven in there. And we've got books about weather around the world, as well as lots more that we can't fit on this screen. So hopefully there's something to appeal to everybody and something for everyone to learn about. Now, if there's a topic you think that we should include a book on, obviously, we'd love to hear about it. You can obviously get in touch and let us know if there's anything you think isn't there that we should be making a book about. So you can use these books to support your child with an interest led or child led curriculum structure. And again, I'd recommend having a look through the web page of twinkle.co.uk slash reading scheme to see the full range. Now, if you're using the book standalone in your own way, these pages are really, really going to be helpful to you. This before reading page contains the key letter sounds and words children need to know in order to tackle the book. And you'll be able to tell by the way they, ca they cope with the before reading page, whether or not it's one to read to your child or whether one it's one that your child will be able to tackle for themselves. And children can practice recognizing all of these key phonic sounds. Quick fire practice is really good here. And then they can move on to blending those sounds into words when they read the focus words. And there are sound buttons and smile lines. And the way the reason we put those on is to remind children when two letters make one sound and when there's just one letter making one sound. So there's a little bit of help with blending those important words. Finally, we've got the common exception words, and those are the tricky words which it's difficult to sound out phonetically at this stage. So if your children can cope with all of the information that they've got on this page and they're reading reasonably fluently, you can feel confident that they can tackle the rest of the book and the reading experience should be smooth. It's a really useful way to introduce the children to those sounds and judge for yourself whether the book's at the right level. Now, at the end of the book, we've got an after reading page. This one's designed for you to read to your child. And there's quite a lot of information and thinking points here which relate to the text they've just read. Hopefully it'll develop their comprehension and language skills at a level that's appropriate to the book. So there's quite a few questions you can discuss together. Some of them are more focused on retrieving the information from the book and some of them will be more focused on applying or relating it to their everyday learning or what they've experiences they've had in their own lives. We also really love our Rhino challenges. These are a feature of all of our books. And there's a few, oh, sorry, Chrissy, if you just go back for a second, there's a little bit there at the bottom right hand corner. And there are a few activities there which we hope will make the book a memorable read. And there's usually some opportunities for craft or research, or drama and role play, hopefully something for everyone to allow children to direct their own learning for a bit and hopefully make the experience memorable. Now, if your children like to keep a record of what they've read, then our reading diaries are perfect. These are printable from the website, as I mentioned before. You can print these out and it will list all of the books that are available in print. And you can have a space to, for your comment about the book and when you've read it as well. 
We've got one for each level and we've got one for all the levels. And we've also got a range of bookmarks, banners and bunting as well in the classroom resources section. And that might be able to you might be able to use those to support with children um, when they're looking at the words and recognizing those letter sounds. Or if you want to um, make a, a learning area or improve the look of your um, learning area. We've also got a few handy posters in the Twinkle store, which kind of display all of those letter sounds really big and really clearly. And again, they could be used to brighten up a learning space or as a way to remind children as they're reading. And they're available from the Twinkle store to purchase too. So that was quite a whistle stop tour of the books and where we are and what we're offering at the moment. Chrissy, I don't know if there's any um, questions so far or should I push on with the next bit. Uh, there isn't any questions so far, but if people do want to, then do pop them in the chat. I think I just wanted to pick up on a few things, and that is that with the Rhino readers, something that you were saying about how you can do it in lots of different ways. So, you know, you can use them following the phonics scheme, but also being able to use them just as a standalone thing and developing your reading as you're going through those levels i think for home educators you know that maybe aren't fans of phonics or their child doesn't get on particularly well with phonics i think that's a you know they're still very much relevant and the other thing i was going to pick up on is the the fact that the non-fiction is what makes them really great as well because my eldest just loved reading non-fiction he wasn't interested in the sort of fictional stories that come with early readers and I really he's 10 now but when he was four and was wanting to read and he just wanted to read non-fiction and there was very very little out there in the way of non-fiction and I think Rhino readers showing all of the different um, non-fiction options is is amazing so yeah really really useful but I can't see any questions so far so yeah if you want to uh, to, to keep pushing on because I think this is going to be really helpful with uh, the home editors. Brilliant, thanks Chrissy. I wanted to spend a little bit of time thinking about some hints and tips that the Rhino Readers team have for how to get the most out of sharing Rhino Readers books with children and of course all children are different in how they approach reading and learning and that's one of the reasons why people choose home ed and not every approach will work for every child but there are some tried and trusted techniques to get children reading more smoothly and fluently which hopefully leads to them reading and enjoying reading more and choosing it as an activity which is what we really want. So I think the first thing to, to stress is that when you share a book together, introducing the book to the child and building it up a little is one of the best ways to get things off to a good start. It demonstrates to the child that you're interested in the book as well and that you want to know more. And it also lets them see what sorts of questions you ask yourself to make sense of a book and what you ask yourself so that you can help anticipate what's coming. And that's a really good modelling technique to use because children will start doing this for themselves as they copy you as you're thinking out loud in that way. So if you're right to jump on, the front and the back covers of the book are generally the point at which I do this. So if we've got here Robot Rick and the Toys at Night, and the way I'd probably approach this is by having a good look at the front cover, reading the title to the child, drawing children's attention to how the title's in the middle and there's some words, and then they've got some characters around the edge. And I'd make sure that they can pick out who they think Robot Rick is from the characters on the front cover. And there's another character I can see next to Robot Rick. Probably wonder out loud what her name is. I'd say they were friends. I can see a teddy that's waving on the cover there, peeping about and waving to me. So I tried to kind of get the children to think about the characters that might come along in the book and model a kind of an interest in them and model asking myself questions about who they might be. I'd then turn the book over to the back and I'd spot out loud that there's also writing on the back and I'd explain that this is called the blurb and the purpose of this is to give us a little sneaky peek into the story. Now the blurb is written at the same level as the rest of the book so it is accessible for children to read but sometimes depending on you know, you know your own child best. Sometimes it's appropriate for the adult to read this to the child so the child can save their stamina for the book itself. And you can use this as an opportunity to draw out their interest a little bit more. And once you've read the blurb together, you can have a guess about what will happen in the book. And this is a really good skill to develop. And you can also see whether or not your children can relate this story to any other stories or plots they know or have read in the past. So you could set also set up a purpose for reading when you read the blurb. 
So you could say something like, oh, I wonder if the toys get into trouble uh, and they need saving. Well, let's read the book. I can't wait to see. And if you model that attitude of questioning and anticipation, then children will pick up on it and they will mirror it for themselves. Now, are you right to jump on, Chrissy? The next thing I would say is that as you go through the book, talking about it, those little asides and breaking off to have a quick chat about what you're reading is really important. So children get the regular points to assimilate what they've read and kind of follow the comprehension through the story. Now, you have to be a bit careful here. You have to get the balance right, because if you're breaking off for a chat every sentence, you can lose the flow of the story a little bit. But definitely with this kind of level book, I'd say every double page, when you turn over, it's appropriate to have a little quick recap of what you found out on the page. So if you're right to jump on, Chrissy, for the next example here from the same book, there's a kind of a, a key point here when um, there's obviously something quite crucial happening in the story. And if I'd heard my child read page nine, but it was quite staccato, there's a lot of sounding out. What I might do is reread the sentence they just read about the sounds from the bedroom, maybe, so I can model how it's read and how it sounds when it's fluent. And then I might say to the child, oh, what's woken Ben up? So that would test whether or not they've assimilated that whole sentence together and then whether or not they're able to make that link between Ben, the dog, bounding in and sounds from the bedroom, which has woken him up. You could ask two questions, I suppose. You could say, who's woken up? and check that they know that it's Ben that's woken up and what woke him up. So you could stagger it a little bit and break it down that way. But mainly just to check that at the end of that chunk of text there, they've understood this key point in the story that's happening. Now on page 10, when you can see that Ben the dog has got hold of Robot Rick, there's a great point to use inference with your child here. What is going through Robot Rick's mind at the moment when Ben is about to lick him and catch him? It's not like we're told explicitly what ben, Robot Rick is thinking here, but it's possible to imagine how he's feeling by thinking about how we'd feel in the same situation and using his facial expressions. And for some children, this is a really challenging skill and it's something they need a lot of practice with. So it's a good point at which you could develop that with the children. It's a good point to think about what might happen next as well. How are children appreciating this is a kind of crescendo and the story is going to come to a kind of resolution. So it's about making that link between this story and other stories they've read. So having that chance to have a little chat every so often through the book will really help the comprehension stick. Um, now, finally, the last thing I'd say to get the most out of a reading session is don't be afraid to reread things, because I feel like the first time children will read a book, especially if some of the words are quite new to them and they've done quite a lot of blending or they've not or they've needed help with um, reading some of the words on the page. It can be mostly about just getting the words out and they're not going to be following the comprehension at page and story level. Now, that is absolutely normal and it, often rereading will really help and in terms of building that fluency and it's good if children see that as part of the process and not something they've done wrong so they have to do it again so making rereading just part of the process and making it normal for doing a book two or three times is really really important and you can help if they start flagging by rereading some of the sentences that they've read so that they, you can model how they sound when they're fluent and how it sounds when you're not sounding everything out but once children have broken the back of a good book and they're beginning to gather that fluency, they usually really enjoy rereading it to you and showing off their progress. And it's really nice if they can experience how much better they've got from the first time they can read it. Maybe there's a younger sibling or an adult to read to who hasn't heard them read the book for a little while and they can comment on how much better and how much more fluent they sound. Um, I don't know if there's anything that you'd be able to share generally about what you find enthuses and motivates children to read more. This would be a good point where if there's anything you found that really helps your children want to read, either pick up the same book and really get into it again or to try something new, it'd be great if you could let us know in the comments because that kind of thing is really helpful to share hints and tips from. So... We've got quite, we've covered quite a lot of the ground there and um, we're at the point where I'm happy to answer questions or chat more generally about anything that you feel the scheme could do with a little bit more elaboration on. It's been lovely to be able to share a lot of the Rhino readers with you and talk through a lot of their features. Um, yeah, I hope that they would be really useful to the home ed community because as you say, Chrissy, they're very versatile and can be used in lots of ways.
Yeah, I think that was such a comprehensive um, talk. So thank you very much. I didn't realise there was all the kind of links through to the phonics and how you can sort of build them all together, which is, is really, really useful for people to know. Um, one question I had is you can buy the books individually. Can you buy them individually but in the set so for example one of number two a one of number two b and like sort of a pack like that or is it just individually you can buy them as individual copies or you can buy them in in the levels you could get all of the level twos together all of the level threes together all of the level fours together right now for sale we've got 24 level two titles and we've got 18 of all the other titles but as i said there are some more coming out very soon and in september we should be able to have an update we've got a new top up pack of 32 books so there'll be slightly more across all of the different levels and there'll be more choice when you look on the store and see all the individual titles so we're growing i think from from 96 to 128 i'm thinking wow. that's great and as I said, the app, I mean, we use them a lot on the app because, um, because yeah, that's that's a really uh, useful tool as well because mine really like the, as you were saying about the interest, um, mine really like the puzzles and the sequencing and they the, those sequencing cards that they have at the end of the app is a really good way of them retelling the story and trying to work out you know remembering and actually at that point I often realized because I have a seven-year-old who is using Rhino readers right now and then I realized actually that because she is at the point where she is sounding more fluent she's pretty fluent but she's still putting so much energy into the fluency that that comprehension still isn't there um, and so she's really keen to take on the more challenging books um, but I still think she gets to the end and she's put so much effort into the fluency and the reading uh, that she often then still doesn't really know. She's missed some key points. And so um, that's kind of really useful, that. And then we go back and reread them. I also find it quite interesting you saying about you re you modelling it because I've never done that because I've always been worried that if I read it, I'm almost allowing them to cheat. So I think that's a really useful tip from that I've picked up personally because I've never done that. So um, so yeah, that that was really really helpful. Oh, thanks. No, no problem at all. I think um, with the rereading, it's about getting them to hear how it sounds when they're fluent and kind of getting getting them to move away from that, um, well, I want to call it kind of a scaffold, isn't it, when they're sounding things out, but they don't quite trust that they can do it in their head. So that sort of thing is, is quite helpful just to show them the next steps, I think. Yeah. Um, just in relation to kind of consolidation and, you know, you mentioned your daughter feeling like she really benefits from those sequencing activities. We have begun to make a range of additional printed activities for the Rhino Readers books. So when you're navigating through from where I showed you on the, um, the Reading Scheme homepage, you might well see that when you click on certain books, you've got a range of activities there that you can print out and use. So for example, sequencing and reading comprehension. And if you feel like your child still needs that little bit of support when they've read the book, and if they're the kind of child who works well with that approach, then there's all of that there to help you as well, which would be supporting your child to get the most out of the reading experience. But all of children are different and lots of them will benefit from the app, lots of them will benefit from sharing the stories together and some of them will want to have a more individual approach where they select the stories based on their interest and their current um, learning needs at the moment. Absolutely and I think that is the key with home ed as I said earlier my son didn't get on with phonics at all um, but you know using something like Rhino Readers and starting at the at the bottom and sort of working your way up you can almost in theory teach just through using the books without all of the phonics bits and it's about picking and choosing kind of what what works for you. We have got some questions coming in. So the first one actually is just a bit of feedback. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to thank you as this has boosted my confidence hugely in going forward with helping my daughter. So that's lovely to hear. But we've got one question. If my child has some reading knowledge, but hasn't actually used any sort of reading scheme, how can I figure out where is the best place to start with Rhino readers or should I just start at the beginning? 
I think the first page of the book might be quite handy for you there because you'll be able to see the sorts of words that we're going to be featuring in the book. So you could kind of have a look at a few different levels and see what the sorts of words at the beginning of a book do look like. We do have um, what, what we've produced for schools is a progression checklist, which will show you exactly which kind of sounds and tricky words children will need to know for each level of book. That's something which obviously as home editors, you'd be able to choose whether or not to use but it might be helpful in terms of indicating to you which which um, sounds and which um, tricky words your child is com completely familiar with and which ones they might need a little bit of help with. So that could be found underneath the teaching section of our site where there's a Ryan Reader's progression checklist. And also in our um, guide, I know you shared the link to the guide, on those two pages where it showed you all the different sub levels, you can see all gathered together all of that information. So if you're confident that your child knows all of the individual letter sounds, but you're not sure whether or not they know where you've got two letters together making one sound for example or ng or ai in paint then you'd be able to have a look there and see which level books would be appropriate for you to start on and then we'll work from there really thank you um, another question is um is there will there ever be any discounts on buying the whole packs all together um or is there the static price I think the, the 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 prices that you can see on the Twinkle store do include a slight discount when you buy the full sets because we sell them for four ninety nine a copy, but it's slightly cheaper when you buy the full sets. I can't quite tell you exactly mathematically what the discount is, but it is slightly cheaper if you buy the full sets than if you buy the individual copies. And I think the other thing is, is if you kind of want to see the Rhino readers and you don't, you know, you feel maybe that. Um, a bit of a way of exploring them I would definitely say head over to the app um, yeah. and I know some people don't like them as apps and some people do like paper copies and I totally get that and it's about working what's best for your learner but actually you know the app is a really great way as an adult to see you know what they have on there um, and so that's really really useful. My personal request is we read the Fire of London one last week the Time Travellers now, having an older reader who loves the Twinkle Originals and absolutely loves the History Hackers, it was really lovely to then have a book that my daughter could read that felt quite History Hacker-like uh, with the kind of time travel. So for me, uh, it would be definitely, can we have some more of those, please? <laughs> Oh, well, yes. I think Jade and Uzma, they're the two characters that feature in the book and they have a time machine. So we've definitely left it open for them to yes, have more right. adventures at other points of history. I, that would be a really good series to make. Yeah, yeah, I liked that kind of bridge into, you know, that idea that, you know, my eldest liked the originals and the ha history hackers. And it just seemed, it just seemed, to, you know, that's also what's great about Twinkle is with each of the products, we, they can all work collectively as home educators. And so, yeah, that gave me that option. I have another question. Do you have any advice about renewing interest when a child has a sort of reading fatigue? My daughter loves reading but finds it tiring to regularly keep at it. I suppose I'd one of the things that I might suggest is trying it on a different platform. I know you mentioned not everybody likes ebooks, but that can be a way to enthuse readers who maybe got a little bit fatigued with reading. My daughter is in this position as well. I'll share that, that she she's not a huge reader of printed books and it's always a bit of a battle. But when it's an, on a device, she's very happy to read more. So I've kind of found that that's a little bit more of a sneaky way to get reading in. I suppose the other thing would be to try to almost let them have a bit more freedom in what they pick to read and be prepared to support them as necessary in that so that if they're picking something that's slightly too tricky you'll be able to do more of the reading but if they're picking something that's slightly that they're more you know if you find that they're picking things that are quite easy it might be that they just want to build their confidence up and feel that they're really fluent in those kinds of books before they, they move on so yeah I'd suggest try a different um, platform for reading and maybe let them have some choice about what they read um, and see if that helps and obviously that like, there might be more hints and tips from other users and other home editors coming in about engaging and reluctant readers which would be really good to share. I think also just reading Two other things is I model reading to my child as well, as in I try. And it's hard because actually I am busy and life is hectic. And I'd love to be able to sit in the garden and read, uh, but I don't have that opportunity. But I do try and almost artificially make it 
opportunities where I sh model the fact that I enjoy reading as well, which is another one, which sometimes we can forget because we're all super busy. Um, and um, and I think that sometimes, you know, helps. And also reading to them still, you know, I think when they start to be able to read themselves, sometimes we can then be guilty of not reading to them quite so much. Um, and I try and always build in the opportunity of, of still reading to them, even my 10, almost 11 year old, um, to, to, you know, get that enjoyment of, of, of stories. So, yeah, definitely. Well, just, thank just, you so, so much. I was just saying, Chrissy, just listening to you, think, just listening to say that, I've thought about something else as well, which I use with my daughter, which is trying to get reading in into activities that she enjoys. So she really likes cooking. So now I'll make sure she reads the recipes and she's go when we go to the library, she always likes to pick a recipe book rather than a fiction book. So maybe just having a look at the range of non-fictions that there are, because some children will be much more switched on when you try and do reading around another activity that way. Yeah, I definitely think it's about the interest because, as I mentioned with my eldest, if uh, that he was not interested in fictional books at all. And to be honest, that's who he is because, as I said, he's turned nearly 11 and will still prefer to read an encyclopedia. The latest one is a book about this thick on every single dog breed ever to have existed. So he is now, he will have his mastermind topic when he is an adult because he knows every tiny little detail about every dog, the breed that's ever existed. Whereas he's not, you know, there's lots of fictional books that are really big amongst his friends in, you know, uh, you know, 10, 11 year olds, things like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. And he's not interested. He wants to sit down and read encyclopedias. And I think it's working with that and going with that. And I think home education allows that. And I think what's great about, and I've said it three times, I'm going to say it one more time, is, is the volume of nonfiction. And where you do those sorts of topics or you go on trips and see things you can there's lots that you can match it to um, and that's why I also like that time travelers because it's that kind of mix between fiction and then fact so yeah but thank you so so much that's been really really useful and really really comprehensive if you are watching on catch up just to say all of the links are in the live chat but you do have to click the live chat button underneath the screen because it's not in the comments when you're re-watching you have to click that live chat button but thank you so much to everybody who has joined us live and thank you so much to joe for all of your help and if you have any other questions then do drop us a line because that email is also in the chat so thank you very much. so much thank you so much and i'll see you soon bye everyone bye